My name is Sudiksha Pudota and I'm from Oak Ridge International School, Hyderabad. The topic that I'll be talking about today is quadratic functions. But before we start talking about quadratic functions or even functions, we need to understand what relations are. Relations are the rela de depict the relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable. While graphing a relationship, it's, al it's always the x-axis that shows the independent variables and the y-axis that shows the dependent variables. Over here, you can see the domain and range. The domain is always the independent variable and the range is always a dependent variable. The first image that you can see depicts a relation, the second depicts a function. In a relation, one value of, um, of the independent variable can have more than one value in the independent, uh, dependent variable. However, in the case of a function, every single value of independent variable will only have one value in the range. Hence, you can say that every function is a relation. However, every relation sh uh, cannot be a function. Now, moving on to quadratic functions. The general form of a quadratic function is ax squared plus bx plus c. The c always depicts the y-intercept. Over here, you can in this graph, you can see that the c value of c is uh, minus 2 because the uh, y-intercept is minus 2. There are different ways to um, show a quadratic function. The first is the intercept form. To obtain the intercept form, which is given as a into x minus alpha into x minus beta, where alpha and beta are the x-intercepts, as shown over here as minus 1 and 2, to get that, we have to split the middle term. In order to split the middle term, it has to be in such a way that b, as shown in the general form, is always the sum of the different factors of a and c. And it's also given over here that a into um, alpha into beta is equal to c, which is the y-intercept. The vertex form is another important way to uh, demonstrate a quadratic function. It's, it's written in the format a into x minus h whole square plus k. In a quadratic function, h comma k always depicts the vertex, which means which is also which is also known as the turning point of the function. The turning point of a quadratic function is when the graph goes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. This is clear when you see here. The turning point of the function is here because you can see that it's going from decreasing to increasing. It can also be from increasing to decreasing, where here is a turning point. At this point, the vertex is also, the coordinates of the vertex are h comma k. Now, this can be shown in various ways and is instrumental in understanding where the function is increasing, decreasing, and also can be used to find the uh, general form. Now, the most, one of the most important things about this is the value of a. a the value of a in a quadratic function dem demonstrates where the orientation of the quadratic function. If a is greater than 0, then the parabola, which is the shape of the function, opens upwards. If it's less than 0, that means it opens downwards. Substituting this value of a, it's, it's easy to find the vertex form as well as the intercept form. Finding the, as I mentioned, the um, inter uh, intercept form is instrumental in finding the x-intercepts, which is where the quadratic function cuts the x-axis. Here, a and um, alpha and beta are the x-intercepts. Another very important aspect of quadratic functions is the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula states that it helps you find the various values of x-intercepts. Since there are only two values for the x-intercepts, or less than two values, this is instrumental in finding um, how many values are over there, whether there are any x-intercepts at all. So, as, so the discriminant in this case is the b square minus 4ac. The value of discriminant helps you understand the number of x-intercepts, the, whether there are any x-intercepts. If the value of the determinant is uh, discriminant is greater than zero, that means there are two x-intercepts, which you can see over here. Since the uh, since the value of discriminant is greater than zero, which is b square minus four ac is greater than zero, you uh, the quadratic function cuts the graph at two points. However, if it's equal to zero, that means that it's a perfect square which means that it only cuts at one point on the x-intercept, but this means that there are two equal roots. The previous one shows that there are two distinct roots. If it's less than zero, that means that it has no solutions or it never cuts the air, 
x-axis, which also means that b square minus 4ac is less than 0, or the under root b square minus 4ac will be an imaginary number. Now, as mentioned over here, 50, minus 15 and minus 3 are the values of the x-intercepts. Substituting over there, you can have a into x minus x plus 15 into x plus 3. Expanding this, you can find the value of the um, vertex, which is minus 9 comma minus 36. Substituting that and equating that, you can find the value of a, which will help you find the general form. The axis of symmetry is where the entire graph is where if you uh, reflects across and forms the same part. At this point, this is also what I said was a turning point or the um, x coordinate of the vertex. Here, a h is equal to minus b by, uh, minus b by 2a. This can also be explained by calculus by finding the uh, finding where the slope is zero, and substituting it. The parent graph. Uh, now I'll be talking about transformations and quadratic functions. The parent graph of any quadratic function is y is equal to x square. This is shown in the graph show, graph above. Different translations include vert vertical translation, horizontal translation, and also stretching and compression. The, f the first translation is vertical translation. Vertical translation occurs when the graph is shifted upwards by a certain number of units. Here, the, the number of units is taken as k, which means that the y value for each point is increased by k units. So here you can see that x squared, which is the parent graph, moves upwards by 8 units, which makes it y is equal to x squared plus 8. And this is also shown by moving it downwards, where here you can see y is equal to x squared. But because you're moving it downwards by 8 units, you see y is equal to x squared minus 8. Now, horizontal translation uh, occurs when you move it to the right or the left by certain units. To move it to the right, you have to do minus h, or where h is the number of units you move to the right. Here, because we move to the right by 8 units, the f uh, final graph is shown as y is equal to x minus 8 whole square. But when you're moving to the left, it moves, it, it's plus h, which means that it becomes y is equal to x plus 8 whole square. Now, I, as I spoke about vertical compressions and stretches, when a, the value of a is greater than the previous value, it becomes narrower. And because we usually take it as a as 1 for y is equal to x squared, which is a parent function, it becomes much narrower. Since we've um, stretched it by a value of 3, it becomes y is equal to 3x squared. If, it's, if the uh, value of a is a, fa um, a fraction, then it becomes even wider, which is also shown over here by y is equal to 1 by 3x squared. Reflection uh, across the x-axis is another important translation, where you see that the value of fx or y is reversed because you're, uh, you're completely changing the values. And another, I, I'd like to show an example of, of how you calculate the general form. So for example, you have a value like this, and you see 2. This one, you take different values, such as 2 and 4, and you join the graph. Now, the vertex, take it as h comma k. And you have, if, if the vertex is given as 3, or the value h is given as 3, then you can easily find the value of a is equal to, here, as mentioned, the x-intercepts are 2 are 4, 2 and 4, so here, if the value of c is taken something like 8, that means that a into minus 2 into minus 4 is equal to 8. This is evident when we write the f general function as this. And here, the value of c are the only possible ind uh, values independent of the value of x. So considering this, you can find that a is equal to 1. From here, you can substitute it. And then you will be able to find the you have the value of a, 1, c, 8, from that you can find the value of b. This is how you can find the different values of a quadratic function, how it can be expressed in a standard form, in the intercept form, in the vertex form, and how you can graph it using the following values. Mm -hmm.